So hi everyone and this will be the fourth part of our game development with Unity 2D series and in fact this time we're gonna take a small detour from our development of the Battle of Teutoburg uh, and we're gonna go back to basics in a way and we are gonna follow uh, another guy uh, book and project uh, so it's a really introductory uh, introductory tutorial, I may say. And uh, it's it's the Weekend Code Projects, Unity's new 2D workflow by Jesse Freeman. I, I really liked this 100-page, uh, about 100-page uh, introduction. And so we're going to go through it. And, of course, um, this is not a replacement for it, it's, it's mostly a review and so I strongly suggest you to, to get it and, and do it yourself. Because, because um, I learned several nice things from it and in fact I was thinking about this because um, in, in, in the previous parts sometimes I assume uh, quite a level of familiarity with, with programming and with some parts of Unity, so if you found those parts uh, too hard, this, this, this uh, guide may help you. And there's more than that, actually, uh, because, in fact, my point, the point I want to make uh, with this uh, part, is also that, um, I mean, learning more I, I understand of Unity, more I find that learning Unity is not just... Um, knowing the principles and how things uh, work conceptually and what are the rules of programming but it's being getting aware being aware of what what what's the simplest way to do things and what's the trick that does it because in video games uh, you know uh, the player expects things which are at, at least prima facie extremely complex but sometimes a small trick can can save your day, and so and in fact, following this this even very introductory material, I learned a lot of uh, small interesting tricks. So uh, so this is this is the PDF that you get. And you get also the assets and resources. And nicely done is the fact that you don't get the project, so you have to do the project yourself. So I won't I won't talk about the the introductory part of uh, the Unity IDE and about C sharp, but I will uh, first of all let's 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 see the project in action because I did the homework. So this is. Uh, my unit project with the tutorial assets and the, the player is guiding this bad green monster and we have a spawner that creates the enemies and makes them come against you. you this is in fact a um, more classical 2D uh, uh, game in the sense that we have a side view and the camera and you move left and right and uh, different things on the bottom of Turtleboard where we're seeing things from the top. So let's see a little gameplay, which is in fact uh, very simple. So we have our monster and we, we move it with the mouse. This is actually a reason why the author choose, chose the mouse, so he can more easily get multi platform uh, functionality. And here are the enemies coming, so they're spawn you see on both sides. And you see a nice gizmo here, customized, and so we can go and eat them, but we also get damage. You see the blood pool, the blood pool goes, fades away after a while, and then ah, let's eat them and eat them. Yeah, but I'm losing life points. Damn it. There are too many of them. Ah, and... So we, we, we actually changed scene here with the game over and I think try again and we can restart. Okay, so what we'll look at actually are mostly the tricks and the scripts. 
So these are the basic questions the author tries to answer. How do I display graphics? How do I make things move? How do you control the camera? How do I dynamically create game entities? How do I detect collision? Create UI? How move between scenes? Now we have actually covered uh, in a way all of these apart the last ones moving between scenes. And in fact, the solutions we have in the Battle of Teutoburg are a bit more uh, refined and uh, complex, let's say, not refined, than the ones we, we find here. And still, there are nice, nice things to learn. So, for example, let's see my notes. Um, well, some really, really simple things. <laughs> which had escaped me, like for example, in our tutorials we always create animations by hand, but if you just have a set of sprites and you drag in the scene, the actually the editor creates an animation by default. So that's cool. And another nice thing is that if you have a folder named prefabs, which uh, actually, so uh, we have in, in, in this project, uh, if you just uh, if you dra just drag a game object inside that folder, the, a prefab from that game object is created. Instead of what I had shown you, I've shown you that I, I always create a prefab by hand, then I drag the game object over it. But it's, it's actually simpler. Another thing that we have in the bottom of Turtle Board is that uh, when we fight with enemies, we bounce somehow. But actually, there's um, uh, a physics 2D material which we haven't used yet. Because that's because in Battle of Teotihuacan we don't use gravity, and with which has a bounciness property. So it's 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 uh, uh, very easy to add it to your games. And so in the case where you're moving left and right, the another nice trick is to change the direction. This project set the scale to minus one to change the direction of the of the game object. A very cool thing is that uh, I, I had no idea about this. In Unity, if there are, there are Unity ID specific classes that you can have as properties in your own classes. So like there's a Unity color class. So this allows the developer to prepare stuff so that in the EIDE it's, it's very easy to set things up for the scene and for the game. So if you have a unity color uh, valued property, then uh, Unity will show the, the specific uh, controller in the IDE. That's that's very cool. In fact, we can see this then in, in the spawner class. If, um, spawner, sorry, not class. Instance. There you see. There it is. And another cool thing is Ah, this is really nice. So the author in this tutorial shows you that you can add your own gizmos, that is controllers that are shown in the scene tab when you're, you're, you're playing the game. Like so, so for example, every time you, you add those empty game objects, which we, we, we do all the time in Unity, why? Because in this way, uh, we we can uh, use uh, Unity's uh, game object lifecycle, which has many nice nice uh, callbacks. Which uh, I'll will send you the I'll put the link in the notes. Uh, I found a nice graphic representation of lifecycle of, of Unity objects. So if you introduce an empty game object in your scene, the problem is that you don't see where it is. <laughs> Uh, unless you select it, but you you can so for example add a gizmo that colors your empty game object only, which is uh, so it's called and drawn only in the scene, so it's only for for development, but it doesn't spoil or influence uh, the game output. So this is this is really really cool, and so it's had its own called that on draw gizmos. And ah, so one thing you find done here uh, a lot is use of coroutines. And um, so, so the author here is is oriented using uh, coroutines for uh, actions that 
of which he wants to set a fixed uh, periodicity instead of using the update methods with a variable. I don't know if it's uh, the perfect way to do it, but it's different from what we've done and works fine. And for example, you'll find this was actually used uh, used uh, everywhere. Uh, for example, in in the attack uh, um, in the attack methods, and and you see the periodicities that using used uh, thanks to yield. So why yield is called yield because it doesn't actually delay, doesn't block the thread. Okay, so the I mean it blocks this thread, but it returns control to to the Unity main loop because Unity main loop knows that it will have to come back here, but it can do other stuff in the meantime before doing another attack. You see, there's a there's a there's a recursive call here, and this would be very dangerous without without this uh, check here of course and another cool thing you'll find in the tutorial is is the use of layer layers for uh, integrate with a collision matrix which we haven't used yet because we in battle of theater we like uh, that everything collides with everything else so so here, if uh, by setting that uh, the little red men, the bad guys, uh, won't collide with the uh, with the other bad guys, uh, this makes for their movement more smooth, and it's a trick you you can use uh, in many different situations in your game. So this is a really nice uh, kind of control that Unity gives you, and it's 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 perfect for 2D in particular because things will overlay and hence collide all the time. So more cool stuff is uh, the on collision stay 2D, which uh, I was aware only on collision ent enter and collision exit, but I think this will be useful in refining the bottom of Turtleburg when the, the Roman and Germanic armies uh, collide. And uh, another cool stuff is if you expose as a property uh, like a vector 2, uh, variable, then Unity again recognizes what, what you're exposing and, and exposes uh, um, a form for dealing with the values uh, by itself, which is, which is perfect. So again, uh, this is cool to know and can be very useful. Uh, in the tutorial, something which we haven't covered at all is, is moving from one scene to the other. And uh, another thing I want to point out is nice uh, how uh, the author uses the sprites to compose um, static scene, almost static scenes, right? uh, uh, by scaling and, and moving the sprites, and so the result is really cool, and 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 you can get it quickly. So what is nice also the philosophy of this tutorial is the fact that it's oriented to getting a game quickly. And and uh, so that you can uh, in, you can release more and more refined version and improve it, but try to get to a running game as soon as possible. Let's see just a few things in code. Um, here you see the the color property used. Um, Ah, it movement movement of the unity. He doesn't use tweenings. He uses just he uses add force. Uh, I wasn't very happy with my experiments with force into the, uh, but here it's used and you you can learn using it. that. The spawner object. Mm, you see, this is the gizmo part. I was talking about to see it in the scene view, and. Okay, here you see instantiation from, from prefabs, but we, we've seen that also in our tutorials. The health bar, now we have we have more refined health bar in, in Battle of Turtleboard, but here it is done simply with uh, the on GUI method, which is cool. So if you want to, if you have uh, just the player health bar, uh, this is a nice and simple way to do it. 
this is again a usage of yield in the attack part and here we see how to load scene we click to continue so it's very simple actually and the way again the way he's he's done it in the code by exposing the scene variable makes it that you can configure the flow between scenes directly from the GUI without programming and here he is handling how to blink how to blink the labels in the, in the introductory and and game over screens now uh, the tutorial ends with some uh, notes on how to handle this begin handling uh, the resolution multi-resolution problems and publishing on different platforms and so this is something we haven't dealt with at all and he gives some nice uh, hints on, on where on how to start dealing with this kind of problem and so I, I think uh, this is all for our uh, part four so we took a detour and we saw how much we we can learn by by consulting uh, different sources and so this is a cool quick uh, reading which I, I suggest to everyone actually have a good time bye